So, hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. This is Dr. Vivek Goel, your nephrology faculty at Doc Tutorials, and we have none other than Dr. Yashendu Sharda with us, who has scored a prestigious score of 322 in the NEET Super Speciality Entrance Exam of Nephrology, and he has scored an awesome rank of All India Rank Four. So, first of all, a very very big congratulations to you, Yashendu. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. So Yashendu, first things first. Just take us through those initial thirty forty seconds when you first saw your score. What did run through your mind, and who did you see the score with, and what happened, and what? Just take us through that scenario. The moment I realized that the score list is out, first of all, I isolated myself, and then I went and saw the score list. And uh, in the first list, the ranks were not out. It was just the mark list that had come. So I went through it manually first. to realize that probably i am the fourth candidate then i shifted to excel formal to make sure that it is fourth only before i make it public so i it took in around 30 40, 40 minutes to sink in that uh, uh, result and then i made it public sir great so yashindu can you just start off with inter- in, with your introduction i mean where have you done where do you stay where have you done your grads and post grads from i am born and brought up in calcutta sir Uh, I've done my under graduation from Saint Dias Medical College and KM Hospital, 2012 batch. I cleared my MBBS in 2018, and with that, I also get into KMC Manipal General Medicine. So I finished that last year itself in June 2021, and since then, I started preparing for my nephrology uh, subject. Sir. So this is your very first attempt at the NEET SS. As I said, right? It's my first. Great, attempt. great. So, to, to all the viewers and the, and the aspirants who have been watching, just see most of our toppers are 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 clearing it at the very first go. That is why I always say to my students that the first attempt is the best attempt. No doubt about it, sir. So, Yashendu, also the viewers would like to know that why have you chosen nephrology? I mean, there are so many other super specialities also. but what inclined you to towards nephrology and at what time in your career did you formally decide that nephrology is a subject that you would be marrying for the rest of your life uh, probably it was my second year of uh, residency sir uh, when we get posted to allied medicine various uh, department uh, that was the time when i realized that uh, i'm not a kind of person who will who will like more of uh, clinical examination and uh, detailed history taking i'm more of a someone who go into labs based and i want it simple to keep it simple it doesn't require a lot of extensive clinical examination and it is just a part of uh, medicine uh, extension of medicine your uh, basic medicine is stays intact diabetic management hypertension management antibiotic management and electrolytes so those things are like basically bread and butter for all of us not just nephrologist even as a physician sir so because of all this i felt like nephrology is something it is worth doing uh, Okay, so did you have any exposure of nephrology before? Have you worked in dialysis units? Have you seen transplant patients before? No, uh, as a part of my general medicine residency, I was posted in uh, nephrology department for a period of two months. So we used to directly communicate with the consultant there. There were no DNB or uh, DM uh, nephrology uh, resident there. So we had a first-hand exposure to patients and managing them. Though I have not seen a lot of, maybe I've just managed one or two transplant patients, sir. and i have not been exposed to peritoneal dialysis also but otherwise hemodialysis and uh, general nephrology i have seen quite a lot sir great great so you know you are also confirming to the fact that most as most of our toppers believe and so do i that you know nephrology is basically very very close to internal medicine and all of us aspire to become nephrologists are basically internists at heart and you know that is why the charm of medicine still remains and then you also get the view of a super speciality you get newer modes as you correctly mentioned that that the renal replacement therapies wonderful so you know i would also like to inform my viewers that yashendu has not only topped the neat super speciality entrance exam but he was also a topper of the ini ss exam so dr yashendu could you just brief our audience and the aspirants about what is the ini ss like and what is the pattern like first of all sir when i started my preparation i was very firm that i want to join a central institute and uh, pj chandigarh was my dream college uh, that's where i wanted to join so my focus was primarily on iniss uh, even when 
during my preparation when the pattern change happened still i stuck to my old pattern because i thought ki it is it is worth preparing for ana because of obvious reasons so that was the time when i still focused on that main core speciality rather than shuffling to general medicine for couple of months and then again shifting back so basically sir ana is uh, constitute various institutes of uh, national importance it includes uh, general uh, aims delhi and along with their other peripheral aims and then there is jipmer and there is uh, pgi chandigarh other central institute as of now don't have a nephrology seats so for a nephrology aspirant these are the only options they have at present and coming to the pattern sir uh, this time most of the questions in ini were all clinical questions it has almost two to three twist at in each question and at each level of twist there were options given so you need to be very good with your basic knowledge so that you can come to the right answer or else it is very easy to make a silly mistake or get a wrong answer there were hardly one line as uh, in our paper okay so you know as he mentioned there are there are two parts of the iniss at the first part there is a theory exam which consists of mainly the the super specialty you are opting for and then if you clear that you get qualified to an interview so that is mainly for the aims to the combined rank you get admitted to the other central institutes and through the aims rank you get admitted to aims and dr yashendu had scored a wonderful rank of a of 9 at at the aims and he is all already you know uh, taken admission at the aims raipur so that is again you know a wonderful performance by dr yashendu dr yashendu has been a subscriber of the elite test series at the doc tutorials and i was just reviewing his uh, scores he has been a consistent performer there so we at doc tutorials you know we don't only conduct weekly tests but we also give a rank to each student after they take the test so that you know it is it acts as a feedback to uh, feedback for the student on both the ways because if he performs well he wants to keep up the pace and maintain his rank if he doesn't you know it kind of hurts his ego and he wants to perform better so dr yashendu was a consistent performer throughout and you know uh, his performance speaks volume and he before, and he's scored a wonderful rank in both the exams at the very first attempt so uh, yashendu you know to any say resident of me- internal medicine who is currently in his residency i mean if he wants to become a nephrologist if he wants to crack the exam in one go just like you did can you just break down your journey of residency and your preparation in year wise and just tell him in brief what are the things he should do and what are the things he should not to be to be like you uh first thing first i feel like uh, uh, during your general medicine residency residency it is very important that you focus on the general medicine per se and don't run behind super speciality because many times even at many places the trend is that even from second year of residency they don't read harrison but they start reading reading super speciality books i feel that is not the correct way to go about Uh, general medicine is something that is uh, very essential to learn so it requires adequate time and importance and since now the pattern for the upcoming years will be different from what we have heard so it will be more focused on general medicine so that is another incentive for uh, general medicine resident to focus more and more on uh, harrison and uh, this thing other than that uh, you need to decide at a adequate point of time that which is the speciality you need to go you cannot wait till the end and then switch speciality but is because it is not so easy to uh, prepare for two subjects so you need to have a clear mindset that this is the speciality i want to get right and then you should go ahead so it requires adequate uh, you can take adequate time to decide which speciality you want to do and take have a proper timeline on how you go want to go about it sir so these are the basic thing i don't think it requires any major planning or extraordinary things it is just consistency and perseverance with your academics and that's it sir so you know dr yashendu has very simply broken down the steps that he followed it was quite a structured approach that he followed in his mind of course so you know he he stresses on seeing the patients very diligently in the first year reading through the book of internal medicine that is harrison's textbook very diligently and in the second year you should decide probably that which stream do you follow want to follow in future and hence forth you can take the path as told by him so yashendu many very often i see residents they are quite confused even in choosing the specialties they want to pursue you know they come and ask me sir what should i do i like neurology also i like cardiology also i like gastroenterology also so can you give them some objective points you know 
the things that kept need to be kept in mind for each specialty of maybe a pros and a cons or whatever so that it helps the students who are listening to you to decide their future course first of all i think you need to have a priority list in your life like uh, how you want to lead your life it uh, you cannot have everything at every point of time you need to accept that and move on you cannot have best of all things so first thing you need to realize what kind of person you are whether a emergency kind of field will suit you or not whether you are ready, ready to dedicate so much time into that otherwise there are other subjects also like probably endocrine and rheumat where you don't have so much of medical emergency when you can have a balanced life so for me i didn't had any major, major uh, reason uh, why i should go for a simple subject not a simple subject exactly but a non emergency subject so i pro- preferably wanted a balance of everything so basically nephrology i think fulfills my purpose it has a intervention option also you have a good op patients good ip patients you can handle emergencies also and you don't have to rush to casualties every time along unlike some other emergency branches like cardiology or something where you need to be active 24/7 and maybe even physically present at the hospital at times so nephrology for in my perspective gives all the balance so that is why i chose that but then it varies from person to person what they have thought about their uh, uh, priorities in life and then take a call all fields are equally good there is no shortage of patient otherwise if you see all fields are saturated itself so i don't think you can take all these things into into account while deciding where you what you want to pursue or where you will stay whether patient will come or not these are very uh, subdued factors is what i feel sir so you know very very wisely said by yashindu that you know i often hear this word saturation it's a very redundant term in my in my sense because you know saturation is it is, it is actually in your mind you know students come and tell me sir cardiology is very saturated neurology is very saturated see you if you do quality work if you know your subject well trust me there will be no dearth of patients no matter how so called pseudo saturation might be prevailing in the market so it is basically first and foremost as he said your priorities in life your passion in life always follow your passion always follow your gut instinct because you know it is not the logical or the rational that will work here because it is a subject that you are going to do for the rest of your life so every morning 8 am you should be motivated enough to be rushing to your clinic or to the hospital and seeing patients and if you know you fall if you don't feel like going out if you feel lethargic then that very day will be the end of your career in my in my mind because you know you need to be very very enthusiastic and motivated while seeing your patients only if you are very passionate about the subject will you be able to do so so very very rightly said now uh, yashendu can you uh, coming to the neat ss i mean can you just tell us tell the viewers how what was the pattern of questions this year what four five topics would you recommend the viewers to be stressing upon more importantly in nephrology and in internal medicine sir uh, this thing the pattern was quite different actually sir from what i have heard neat ss usually used to be a fact based pattern is what i heard always so actually i was little uh, afraid of the exam because i was no, i'm not very confident when it comes to facts but then surprisingly this time it was not at all fact based all the questions were clinical based questions though they had just a simple twist but you need to be patient enough to read whole whole question and there will be one or two clue that will give you the answer and there were hardly very difficult question in under the nephrology section they mainly focused on glomerulonephritis general nephrology and uh, transplant and dialysis were not uh, very did not uh, form a major chunk of questions there were hardly few questions from there so it was majorly glomerular nephritis and uh, general nephrology is the first thing i think one should focus on and when it comes to medicine uh, this time the paper was quite weird almost out of uh, 40 questions of general medicine 25 to 30 questions were from neurology so i don't think one can prepare for that you have to take into account uh, as a standard paper and then prepare so you can't do anything about that very correctly you know put by dr yashendu because you know this time it was really aberrant most of the students came back called and texted me that sir it was as if you were appearing for a neurology paper along with yes. nephrology but right. you know i think maybe that was their weird kind of way to test your depth in maybe in medicine because you know those people who had studied internal medicine thoroughly those who were internists at heart 
they have you know very uh, easily cleared the exam that is what but that is what i have the feedback i have got from all the students wonderful now coming to doc tutorials you had been a subscriber of the elite test series and so what was your experience like about the test series you've seen quite a few of our videos as well and uh, you have also been a very very active member of the social media circuit the whatsapp groups so what how did it feel like being a part of this and how did it benefit you if at all it benefited you it was quite wise of me to join doc tutorial in the first year uh, because uh, i had joined doc tutorial i was a part of elite test series so initially the pattern was like we used to have a weekly test series and then along with that we used to get a grand test as well uh, both before iniss we got one and we got couple of them before neat ss so i was initially we had a weekly test it, it was divided on the topic wise and the biggest positive from doc tutorial was they used to conduct live tests that was a incentive that okay that 48 hours are there so you have to sort out the test so that pushes you to go and attempt the test so that you get a realistic rank on where you are standing so that was something very you know appropriate and peculiar about a doc tutorials other than that i was a part of a whatsapp group that was quite active and handled by you and the advantages of that group sir we used to get recent updates like i remember that ckd api equation they have removed race so all these things i got to expose from you i didn't read that in fee hali or somewhere else so those recent updates and then recent guidelines and even kdgo 2021 which came last year even those recent peculiar updates which is important for us everything was highlighted by you which i think won't be easily available on the textbooks which are usually released once in 3 4 years so they won't have latest updates and other than that i always had you as a mentor i will not i cannot deny that still remember even at 1 am 2 am if i have any doubt i'll just whatsapp you and leave it whenever you are free i'll get a reply because there are always controversies here and there so you get a realistic opinion from you you that okay this is the one which i have to mark which is important for me or which is the one i should mark in my question exam so i felt it was quite uh, wise of me to join doc tutorials and then when i saw the actual results i saw that most of the people who have done well in doc tutorials are the same people same candidates who have done well in both the exam not just i and i even for neat ss so that gives a good you know reality check for you how where you stand in the competition wonderful wonderful so as dr yashendu mentioned that you know as and uh, how were the questions at the elite test series dr yashendu it was like many students was, told me that they got many common questions also out of it uh, right sir sir first of all elite test series the question which were there was quite realistic as per the current need pattern it was very very similar it was not at all fact based and it was not very difficult also they had one or one twist or maybe a lengthy question with one or two clues which were there in elite test series so it was very very similar and i still remember like many questions were almost like similar or the topics were similar from elite test series and the neat ss pattern even when it comes to ini mock interview which, which you had conducted i still remember that acute kidney disease which uh, you had told i was not aware of that term which is not given in textbook at least i am not aware of that it came in neat ss so i don't think someone who is just reading a textbook will be aware of that term so that question totally is dedicated to you because I, if i had not attended that mock interview i wouldn't have marked the answer or else i would have marked it wrong so definitely the pattern of questions in doc tutorial and the current neat ss was very very similar there is no second thought about it wonderful you know i personally crafted those questions and i made it a point to not you know hand pick them from old redundant mcq books i made all the questions were newly made and you know of course because in nephrology it's a ever evolving subject especially the glomerular diseases especially the transplant guidelines the the hypertension guidelines so all these need to be you know updated with every passing day perhaps because you know uh, if you the old mcq books or maybe the old sources still have the old answers which are absolutely wrong coming to the textbooks also because as you said they are written once in 3 4 years they also have the previous things and that is why you know uh, i personally made those questions covering the entire length and breadth of the of the subject so that you don't have to go anywhere else everything was assimilated at the very same place and uh, yes at the interview that dr yashendu was talking about i conducted the night before the ini uh, ss interview the, the the night before i conducted a mock interview where you know i was really quite late returning from the hospital so i thought maybe many of them will not join 
and i thought i'll maybe wrap up in an hour and a hour and a half but you know it continued like for two and a half to three hours and i had so many 16 16 uh, students were there who had qualified for the interview and uh, i really got a good feedback because you know while doing the interview only i realized that some people don't know the basic uh, clinical syndromes of nephrotic syndrome when to say what when to say akd when to say aki when to say ckd so you know i thought let me just clarify the doubts and uh, quite a few questions were common in the interview also which we discussed as the students had mentioned so i'm really very 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 happy about the performance and uh, dr yashendu always has been a great great you know participant in all the events that are conducted at doc tutorials so uh, last few things yashendu i mean yes, very many people think that uh, i mean they are afraid of stat bio stats also because you know it it does form maybe a very minute uh, role but it it is included in the mcq exams so what is your inference should students be afraid about it or should students be you know follow them very rigorously study them rigorously or it is okay you one can manage it no i feel like uh, almost uh, from what i know like two to three questions from the general medicine used to come from biostat and uh, it is quite scoring is uh, what i know so it just require uh, less time intake and it, it reveal it used to give high rewards so i think it is worth spending and you just need to spend 3 4 hours max to max and just revise it once i still remember that i have attended a video by dr rajeshri ma'am if i'm not wrong and she had conducted 2 and a half 3 hours video but it had complete like top to bottom full biostats were covered but this time uh, not even one question from biostats were asked but i think it gives edge because if you don't know two or three question in biostat i think it can affect your rank and then it can affect your college also so i think it since it takes only 3 to 4 hours to cover it i think it is worth doing it and then have your all bases covered because exactly. it is always unpredictable so you cannot uh, have a standard pattern this this time they ask neurology next time they ask biostat so you need to make sure that all your bases are covered only then you can have consistent performance in any kind of exam exactly so you know we also try to cover this aspect as well by by requesting dr rajeshi to conduct a special session and she assimilated all the important formulae all the important concepts in in a couple of our session and which most of the students benefited a lot so had there been any questions out of statistic biostats as well then our students would have uh, been the winners in that aspect as well so we try to cover each and every aspect for that matter now uh, yashendu one question everybody is wanting to know all uh, mostly the rankers who are below you also they are inching to know what is your plan now i mean what you already have a seat there now you have a panorama of colleges in front of you what are you going to do i thought maybe cracking the exam is challenging now i am now <laughs> descending on a college i am finding it more challenging so every college has their own, own pros and cons so got a admission in aims raipur but most likely i am planning to surrender that seat because uh, i want to Uh, because the department is still relatively new so i feel that uh, i want to prepare and uh, work in an environment which is quite uh, developed and uh, they have a good consistent patient load all kind of exposure transplant exposure crrt everything is there so as of now i have narrowed down to two colleges uh, one is of course scpj probably the most premier institute for nephrology uh, and the second one is probably ipgmr because it is my hometown so i'll be probably narrowing down to one of them and i'll go for it because i know the choice which i feel i'll get it so that is also a tricky situation to be in <laughs> so you know sometimes when you have a lot of options that also can be intriguing and challenging right really really definitely no you just imagine had i been probably uh, 20 25 then the excitement i would have ha- hard to get into scpji and now i am like into plus minus like which is good which is bad which is good which will suit me which will not suit me so these are second thing first thing always you need to crack the exam so at least i am in a position to take a call things are at uh, my end so i think that is something everybody should uh, try for you shouldn't rely on somebody else to okay somebody will see, take a seat there so i have a chance so that is the best scenario to be in this is a good confusion headache to have i feel absolutely absolutely so you know obviously both are premier colleges and you know ultimately what will matter is the student and if anywhere you go yashendu you will obviously shine out and be a good nephrologist i hope so so uh, with the last parting words is there any message 
we would like to give to the doc tutorials team not only to the faculty but also the people who are sitting behind the screens behind the uh, curtains and working so hard day in and day out for you all i uh, definitely a big cheers to you sir because uh, your commitment was extremely admirable sir i still remember like one or two days before exam you used to send those audio clips of one minute two minutes and we could revise topics very fast and it was a confident booster for us so definitely you are the face value as of now for <laughs> nephrology in doc tutorial but yeah it requires a lot of uh, backstage work as well so i'm pretty sure a lot of uh, team is there behind you who are running behind it so even when i had some technical difficulty in handling the app they were always there to help there is no second thought about it so yeah it's a big cheers to both uh, you as well as your team sir great great and uh, any last message you would want to give to the to any viewer any medicine resident or maybe even a mbba student who wants to become a nephrologist like you what is your message to them uh, see i feel uh, whichever field you go every field is challenging every field is saturated you can't think about all that and take decisions and uh, you need to have clarity what you wish to do i don't think there is any harm in spending some time in planning and thinking about everything but if you have taken a decision stick to it don't uh, be a fickle minded person and start switching decisions first this then that it becomes very uncertain so you have to spend adequate time in planning whatever you wish to do whether it is mbbs md you want to study in india you want to go abroad give adequate time give talk to lot of people realize what are the pros and cons of each your stream or whatever place you want to be in take a wise call which will suit you the best because something which is better for somebody else may not be good for you and ultimately uh, as i remember uh, it was in one of your slide if you don't sacrifice for what you want uh, what you want you becomes miss. the sacrifice so uh, that is definitely there so so it's a personal call at the end of the day you have to see your scenario you have to see what are your strengths and weaknesses and then take a call accordingly there is no great. standard one one short fits all it doesn't work i feel so great words of wisdom shared by dr yashendu so it was a great pleasure talking to you ashendu hope you Thank become you, a very good nephrologist and keep soaring the flag of nephrology high and we hope to keep in touch we hope to meet Definitely in conferences sir. and webinars yeah. and uh, right, let us take the field of nephrology to greater heights right, thank sir. you so very much thank you sir thank you sir thank you to your whole team sir thank you thank you